Hello and welcome to Late Model Stock Car Racing. My name is Peter Lanzillo and today in October, it's October 12th, this, the foliage is out, the air is cool, and we're in Con Thompson, Connecticut at the Thompson Speedway where the American Canadian Tour is running a 75 lap, their final race of the season. They got a lot of racers from Thompson that they, Thompson Speedway runs the American Canadian Tour rules. And we have regulars, Mark Jensen from Belling, um, let's see, he's from Warwick, R Rhode Island. Woody Pitcock, he's a, a big name in the modified ranks. He'll be running an American Canadian Tour car today. He's from Bellington, Bellingham, Mass. And Glenn Boss of Dan Danielson, Connecticut. He'll be here trying to steal a win away from the Tour regulars. Okay, with the Tour re regulars, in second place we have Jimmy Hebert, and Jimmy will be going for a win. He wants to finish the year out with a win. He's usually strong here, and uh, I know he would love to have a win, but he's going to have to fight off Paye. Scott Paye in the 37, always running strong in the Tour. And, of course, we have the 30 of Rick du Dubo, and he is running very strong, and he just may walk away when we finish up tonight with the championship. We'll have to wait and see. So I, I encourage you, if you've never been here, to Thompson Speedway in October for the World Series, you got to put it on your bucket list. They've got a ton of cars here. We, let's see what we have. We have in, in some modifieds, a big block supers. We have the uh, midgets. We've got trucks. We've got late models. We've got stock, street stocks. Big race on Sunday with the modifieds. Sunoco modified, wheel and tour modifieds, they're all here. So if you can get out next year, come on down. October, a World Series in Thompson, Connecticut. Today, we're going to be watching the American Canadi Canadian Tour finish out their season. ACT World Series 75. Canadian Tour, of course, they use the plus, we use the, we, they, they use the plus minus handicap system. Uh, starting positions are set by a blind draw as the cars come through the technical inspection at the beginning of the day. And then the object is to pass as many cars as you can and finish in a qualifying position. Uh, eight will be the number today. Top eight cars will qualify to their handicap earned in the plus minus. And if you start second and finish first, you get a plus one. If you start first and finish third, you get a minus two. The driver with the highest plus starts on the pole when it's all said and done. In a start descending order. Uh, one asterisk put there. If you have won an American Canadian Tour race in 2019, you cannot start any better than 10th. So the drivers that have already won are going to have to race their way forward. Let's take a look at our starting lineup from Blaineville, Quebec. The Duraking 4 Diffusion. That is Matthew Kingsbury, car number 9 to his outside. It will be car number 72 from Massachusetts, leading rookie on the American Canadian Tour in 2019. That is Ryan Coon. The 29, that's Josh Hedges. Regular at the Star Speedway, and then car number 22, that is Lance Jennison at Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. The Halls use Auto Pirates Automobile. Car number three, that is Glenn Boss from Danielson, Connecticut. Outside of him will be Graniteville, Vermont, Stephen Donahue, third generation driver behind the wheel of a late model. Car number 15, that is Jake Johnson. Regular here at Thompson Speedway, the 64. That's Christopher Pelkey, TC3, Tom Carey the third, the Brookside car number five. Alexander Tardiff at car number 21, another driver representing the province of Quebec. And shot get on the field from Milton, Vermont, the Sweethearts and Heroes, flooring 360 Dodge Charger for Dylan Paye. Again, 10 lap heat races, pass as many cars as you can. The driver that passes the most and finishes inside of the top eight in his respected heat race will start on the pole. And they'll go in descending order from there on back. Everyone that finishes outside of the top eight is going to have to start in the tail end of the field. Pace car is going to make the hard left-hand turn into the infield. And all the way from Plattsburgh, New York, our chief starter, Jason Lemoy, is going to look the field over. Here they come off a of turn four. Green flag is in the air. Oh, and Glenn Moss going around to the front straightaway. Dylan Paye locks car number seven down. And we're going to see if that Glenn Boss automobile can get refired on the front straightaway here. It's, doesn't look like it's going to be able to. Glenn Boss will bring out the first caution flag on the first lap. 
And a car number three, that's Glenn Boss, making his first start with the American Canadian Tour in 2019. Today, that's the 22 South Carolina. Of course, you'll notice Mark, he normally races here at Thompson Speedway. He'll be in competition too. He, he drew uh, starting position. It looks like it's going to be fifth place in heat number two. So the brothers are here. Uh, father and son combination of Stephen and John Donahue. Stephen is the son in that combination out of Graniteville, Vermont. He's in this heat race. His dad, John, is also here today. He's a multi-time winner on the American Canadian Tour and at Thunder Road. And uh, he'll be out in heat number three. Restart lineup is now Quebec. Kingsbury in the nine and Ryan Kuhn in the 72, our leading rookie on the American Canadian Tour, Ryan Kuhn. He is leading over Stephen Donahue in the battle for Rookie of the Year. Trent Goodrow and Mike Foster, also rookies that have scored rookie points in 2019, but it looks like uh, the Rookie of the Year award is going to go to the 72 of Ryan. The Everett's Auto Parts car. He'll be flanked on the start right now by Paul Sitter. That is Matthew Kingsbury. Of course, the American Canadian Tour does not allow lane choice like Thompson Speedway does. So the weekly late models, they allow lane choice. But if on the American Canadian Tour, if you are in the lead, you are on the inside of row number one. No lane choice, no lucky dog. None of the gimmicks, frills, or frazzles. Just straight up hardcore racing like it used to be. And we are ready to go. Kingsbury on the inside in the nine. Ryan Coon on the outside of the 72. Down to the straight three. it into the outside lane in turn number one with the race lead as they go through turns one and two and down the back stretch. Kingsbury flashes his race car up to the outside lane because that's where you can keep the momentum up. As we just saw that modified race a little bit earlier on. Stephen Donahue working the inside group trying to go to second. Kingsbury tries to hang on to second. Donahue wants it to go to two. That was We've got one of ten complete. And Stephen Donahue in car number two is wrestling his way up the inside lane. He's going for second, but Kingsbury holds him off. Out in front, the number 72, the Everett's Auto Parts car for Ryan Coon shows the way. Kingsbury in the two. Donahue, Kingsbury in the nine. Donahue in the two. Josh Hedges in the 29. And Chris Pelkey in car number 64. He started in the eighth position. He's worked his way up the outside lane now to about sixth place. And comes slicing off of turn number two. Donahue has to back out of the gas. Jake Johnson drops the 15th guard down to the bottom of the racetrack. He'll challenge Tom Carey the third for that position off turn number four. At the front, it is still Ryan Coon. Kingsbury holding on to second. The two of Donahue. Hedges in the 29. Pelkey in the 64. The 15 and the five. That is Jake Johnson on the inside. TC3 on the outside. And Alexander Tardik's 21, Glenn Boss trying to rebound after the early spin, and Dylan Payet struggling in count number seven. Payet, count number seven, last year's Rookie of the Year on the American Canadian Tour, struggling to get rolling out of the back of the pack here at the Thompson Speedway. I'll tell you right now, the driver who is in the running for this year's Rookie of the Year award is not struggling here at Thompson Speedway. One bit, he's showing the way. The Everett Auto Pirates, Kyer 72 for Ryan Coon, your leader. Matthew Kingsbury, count number nine, and Donahue in the two. Fourth place, now Hedges in the 29. Fifth and six, TC3 and the 64 of Pelkey. Tom Carey down low, Chris Pelkey up high in the 64. Jake Johnson, caliber 15, has seventh. And the final qualifier right now is Glenn Boss, the guy that spun on lap number one and the hook straightaway. Found his way up to the final transfer spot as the right side of the 15 of Jake Johnson now flapping in the breeze after a little bit of contact, I believe, with the outside retaining wall. Damage to the 15 of Johnson as they go down the back straightaway. Boss on the inside, tired of 21. Pay in the seven, looking for qualified spots right now. We're gonna have three laps to go on the top eight qualify. Top eight guys transferred to the plus minus handicap system. Everybody else is going to the rear of the field. Brian Coon, no questions asked, has been in command of this one. Stephen Donnie was finally dispatched the nine of Matthew Kingsbury. The two cars driven away with the number two position. Kingsbury in the nine has third. Fourth is Hedges. Fifth is TC3 in the five, moving up nicely. Two laps to go right now for the field. Look at the Hornets' nest right now for the eighth position, currently being held by the three of Glenn Boss. They are two by two by two right there behind him. Four cars under a blanket. Only two of them are going to advance into the, hand, into the plus minus handicap pool. Who's going to come out with the spots? 
White flag is out one more time around the Thompson Speedway. For Ryan Kuhn, who's out on top at number 72. Top eight cars transfer. Glenn Boss is on the bubble. Alexander tired of trying to make a run for it on the outside of the Ford, got number 21. Glenn Boss, though, staying on station on the inside up the four corners. Ryan Coon takes the win to the 72. Ryan Coon, your winner. Stephen Donahue, Matthew Kingsbury, TC3, Josh Hedges, the 64 of Chris Pelkey, Jake Johnson in car number 15, and Glenn Boss in car number three, the driver that spun on lap number one comes home with the final qualifying position here in heat number one. Heat one of three, three qualifying heat races. Here at the Thompson Speedway data today to set our starting lineup. Heat number two, getting ready to make its way out of the pits and starting on the pole in count number zero, seven. A Woody Pitcat, who was a very busy boy here at Thompson Speedway this weekend. That's the Summit Ice Ford Fusion. He's going to be on the pole. Not entirely sure why he's gone to the outside. Pit Cat in the 07 should be on the bottom. I'm trying this again. You go high, you go low. There we go. Pit count the 07 getting it now. He goes on the inside. Outside of him, that is Alan King in the 30 Connecticut. Starting third on the grid. Looks like the 99 of Brandon Lindahl is elected to go to the rear. So that's going to move Mark Gettis in the third in car 22. Remy Perot in car number 33. Most recent winner in the American Canadian Tour here at Thompson Speedway. Jimmy Hebert, the number two point man coming in today, will start from the fifth position. Alongside Hebert to his outside will be Mike Benavides on a westerly Rhode Island in car number 50. Two-time winner this season, Brian Kruzek in car number 19. And to his outside, car number 7, it's Jason Larrabee Jr. Number three point man in 2019. And the two-time and defending ACT champion, Scott Paye in the 37. Jonathan Bouvret from Blaineville, Connecticut. And on the rear, that'll be the number 99 of Brandon Lindahl, who elected to go to the rear. He will start from shotgun. Lights are down on the Thompson Speedway pace car, which means next time by, we're going to go racing. Woody Pitcat on the inside, a former winner on the American and Canadian Tour at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, and to his outside, the number 30 of Alan King. Now, you're going to have to forgive me when you see our point leader come out a little bit later on tonight. Uh, I may mix these two guys up tonight. Their cars are very similar, as you'll see momentarily in heat number one. Heat number three assembles on the racetrack. Pit Cat on the inside, King on the outside. Jenison and Perot out of turn four. Green flag is in the air. Woody Pit Cat pounds the accelerator all the way to the floor and explodes with the race lead down the front straightaway. Jenison follows it through on the bottom for second, third, goes now to Jimmy Heber. Oh, we got a car around to the back straightaway. I believe that will be the number 99 of Brandon Lindahl. Lindahl brings out the caution flag as he spins on the back stretch. And it looks like Jeff Deary in car 21 is going to go for the slide for life down the front straightaway as well after some possible contact. Lights are down on the pace car. And we're just about set to go. Zero, 07 carry. Or no, it's not Tom Carey anymore. It's Woody Pitcat. Woody Pitcat behind the wheel of somebody's forward effusion. And outside of him will be Mark Jennison. Alan King in the 30 Connecticut. And a 58 of Jimmy Hebert. Jeff Deary in the 21. And Remy Perot in the 33. Mike Benavides. Brian Kruzak. Jason Larry Jr. Scott Paye. And all the rest. Here they come. Off a turn four. Back on their three. Down into turn number one, Woody Pitcat trying to handle his way on around the bottom of the racetrack, but Jennison rolls it up the outside lane with the lead down the back straightaway. Scott Paye, 37, back of the pack, making left and right turns down the back stretch. 
slicing his way through traffic, gets around Benavides, drives down underneath Randy Perot as the 30 of Alan King is getting the shuffle on the outside lane. 22, Mark Jennison is the leader. Then it is Woody Pitcat in the 07. Jimmy Hebert in the 58. Jeff Deary, Brian Kruzek, and Scott Pay in the RPM car on the charge. Whoa, and around goes King and Comet 30 in turn three. King in the 30 goes for the spin. Looks like he's trying to get that thing re-fired and will stay under green. Battle for fourth. Down to the bottom goes Brian Kruzek and Comet 19 working over Jeff Deary's car 21. Deary holds the outside lane and with the lead, or with the lead in that battle for the fourth position, he'll hang on to fourth. Payet in count number 37, beginning at his march through the field. The RPM Racing Engines Dodge Charger as everybody chases the 22 of Mark Jennison at the front of the pack. Woody Pinkat, 07. Number 58, Jimmy Hebert. He's squared up there. Pinkat, the 07, comes out victorious in that battle. Pinkat will hold on to second. We've got four laps in the book. 22, Mark Jennison, Woody Pickett in the 07, and Jimmy Hebert in the 58, Vermont. Jennison in the 22, coming under the cross flags, we're halfway home. Halfway home for the 22, Mark Jennison. 07. Woody Pinkett, Jimmy Hebert in the 58 third, fourth place to Jeff Deary, fifth place to Brian Kruzek, sixth to Scott Paye, seventh is a 41 of Uber and Jason Laramie in car 70. And then Mike Benavides in the 50. Flat traffic dead ahead for the race leader, outside pole center Alan King from Hampton, North Carolina. He'll go a lap down as they come off of turn number four with three laps to go. Three laps remaining for Mark Jennison in car number 22, looking for his first heat race win on the American Canadian Tour. He's been a regular down here in Southern Connecticut this season after running full time on the American Canadian Tour for a handful of years. Popsicle sticks coming out, two to go for Jennison. Battle right now for fourth continues. Krusek on the bottom, 21 Deary in the 19. Flat traffic, dead ahead there, three wide, headed for one. Krusek muscles his way through in the middle. Everybody able to navigate their way around the lap car, the 30 of Alan King, as the white flag is set to fly for car 22, Aaron Gennison. One more time around for Gennison at count number 22. Jeff Deary of the 21 is holding strong in the battle now for the number four spot, but Brian Krusek will not quit. Six to pay a seven to move rent. And Laramie the final qualifier in the 70. As the checkered flag is set to fly, Mark Jennison will score the heat win. Woody Pinkat, Jimmy Hebert, Jeff Deary, Brian Krusek, Scott Paye, 41 move rent, and the 70 of Jason Laramie Jr. in car number 70 will be the final car to qualify here in heat number two. We got one more 10 lap heat race left to set the starting lineup for the American and Canadian Tour. And then we'll move into the feature event for, looks like, oh no, next thing on the track will be heat races for the NEMA, NEMA lights. All right. There you go, heat number two making their way through the pit road and back into the infield, or back into the pit area. And here we go. With heat number three, final heat. Paul Newcomb out of Plymouth, Massachusetts. The Newcomb's tree service. Monte Carlo will go on the pole. Outside of him will be Ryan Lynham out of Hope Valley, Rhode Island. Trent Goodrow. In the 31, we'll start from third. Outside of him will be Rich DeBow in car number 30. That is the current point leader on the American Canadian Tour with an over 100 point lead coming into this event. DeBow in car number 30. Starting next on the grid in car number 42. The driver all the way from East Quaggy, New York, it's Frank Dimicic. 
Outside, Dimitrichi, Canterbury 44, it's Michael Mitchell. John Donahue, Big Irish, in Canterbury 26 from Granville, Vermont, and Michael Ray from Northford, Connecticut. Peyton Lanfear on the inside of row number five in Conover 22, and her sister to the outside, that is the 21 of Riley Lanfear. Final row in heat number three. Last two names going on the board for ACT qualifying. Ryan Morgan on the inside, and on the outside, Derek Luchocki. Luchocki. Luchocki will go on the, or will go on, yeah, he'll go shotgun in the 0-3. Luchaki on the rear, 0-3. Clinch green flag for Plattsburgh, New York's Jason Lemoy. Lights go down on the Thompson Speedway pace car. Next time by, we're going to go racing. Ten laps, top eight transfer. Paul Newcomb and Ryan Lightham. Trent Goodrow at count number 31, and the point leader, Rich DeBow at count number 30, who pretty much just needs to tap dance his way, tiptoe even, is way into the main event tonight to take down the 2019 ACT Championship. Pace car is ready to make the hard left hand turn into the infield. And we are ready to go for 10 laps. And oh, look out! Newcomb going around at the start. Newcomb in car number seven punched on the gas coming off the fourth corner. And around he went. And then it looks like Luchaki in the 0-3 and Riley Lanfear in the 21 trying to get themselves woed down also. All right. Ryan Lina, but got to pretend he's going to have to go to the inside. Trent Goodrow, 31, will pull up to his outside. Rich DeBeau. Count number 30. Dimitrich in the 42. Dimitrich in count number 42 will go from fourth. Fifth place is Mitchell in the 44. Donahue, Ray, Lanfear, Lanfear, Morgan, Blue Jockey, and Newcomb. Final heat in a round one qualifying. Here we go. Coming out of turn number four. Down to the line. Green flag is out. Whoa, Trent Goodrow hard into the wall in turn number one. Something broke on the right front corner of the 31 car. Number three rookie coming into the 2019 series finale. And he had a malfunction at the junction and turn number one is the right front corner no longer keep it up with the rest of the race car and he slammed the outside retaining wall and that may end the night early for the number 31 of Trent Goodrow. Dimitrich in count number 42. Currently sitting in that third position. And alongside him is Mike Mitchell in count number 44. Johnny Donahue in count number 26 from Graniteville, and outside of him, it's Michael Ray, and then the Lanfear sisters in a row four. Younger Peyton on the inside, the older one Riley on the outside, 22 and 21 respectively. Zero laps complete, 10 to go. Here they come at a four. Rich DeBoe giving plenty of room on the outside. Green flag back in the air. Rich DeBow in count number 30, the point leader of the American Canadian Tour, leads the heat race into the first corner and down the back straightaway. Ryan Lineup and Michael Mitchell around the outside will go to third. John Donahue trying to make it work on the bottom of the racetrack. Three wide in the back of the pack, and Blue Chalky in count number 0, three backs out of it. Is Riley Lanfear, Ryan Morgan swap some paint. Now Luchaki will dive to the bottom there. Three wide down the back straight away with Paul Newcomb trying to move up. Problems for the Luchaki in the 0-3. Looks like he's going to bring that car straight to pit road. Something broke in the right front corner of that automobile. Looks like a tire down on the 0-3 as you get a look of it in there. Two laps are on the board and it is Rich DeBow in count number 30 showing the way. 
Ryan Lina, Michael Mitchell, and John Donahue in a fourth place now in the 26. From Granville, Vermont, the Irish power is getting turned up. John Donahue on the 26 is fourth. Fifth to Dumicic. Michael Ray, Ryan Morgan, and Pete Lamp here in the 22. Rich DeVoe, the point leader. Showing the way as we're getting ready to come around to the cross flags. Halfway home will be the signal as they come off a of turn four this time. Ladies and gentlemen, on the move right now is that 26 of John Donahue. He has tracked down the third place car. The Wells River Chevrolet SD's trucking car number 26 for John Donahue has caught third place. Michael Ray, the 42 Connecticut, is slipping back through the field as now Ryan Morgan works to his inside lane off the fourth corner. Four laps to go here at Thompson Speedway in round one qualifying for the American Canadian Tour Lane model. Rich DeBow out on top. Trying to cap off his storybook year in storybook fashion. Three laps to go in heat number three. DeBow, Ryan Lynham. Mitchell and Donahue now battling off a of turn number two down the back straightaway for third. Mitchell pulls back ahead as Donahue had to wall the car up around the bottom of the racetrack. Two laps to go for Rich DeBow and count number 30. And now Donahue goes to third on the inside of the 26. Donahue started seventh on the grid and is now up to the number three position as he dispatches the 44 of Mike Mitchell. White flag ready to fly. Final lap in heat number one, ready to commence one more time around the speedway. Rich DeBow at Canterbury 30 leads down the back straightaway for the final time. Couple of car links in hand over Ryan Lineup at Canterbury 10. Two school buses back to John Dotty with the 26. The checkered flag comes out. The number 30, Rich DeVoe, your winner. Ryan Lineup, John Dotty, Mike Mitchell, Ryan Morgan. Frank Nemechich in car number 42. Then the 22 of Peyton Lanfear, Paul Newcomb, Michael Ray, and Riley Lanfear. Tough break for Derek Luchaki in car number 03, Massachusetts. He'll have to go in on the record, as will the 31 of Trent Goodrow. So a couple of cars getting crossed up. But Rich DeBow will pick up the bonus points for scoring the heat win. And the caution flag is out. Final event of the season. Conclusion of, 2009, of 2000 and 2019. The conclusion will commence. We'll take a look at our starting lineup on the pole out of North and Franklin, Connecticut. The Brooklyn's Country View Restaurant with a plus six in qualifying Ryan Morgan at car number 31, Connecticut. Starting second outside of row number one from Warwick, Mass. The Brookside, car number five for TC3, Tom Carey, the third. Lil Irish, Stephen Donahue is going to take the Bulldog Metal Recycling Kingsbury Company's car number two from third. And it will be the all Donahue row as they go son on the inside and father on the outside. The Wells River Chevrolet, Bolt, SD's trucking, kind of number 26 for Big Irish, John Donahue. Former Quebec Series champion, Jeff Deere will roll from fifth in the construction CRD entry. And outside of him also representing Quebec from Blaineville, the former St. Eustache Series champion. It is Jonathan Abu of Red rolling off in the seventh position from Warwick, Rhode Island. The Halls used Auto Pirates Mustang. The 22 is Mark Jennison. And outside of him from Cumberland, Rhode Island, it's the All Rhode Island. Row number four for Michael Mitchell. The Troy City Tactical Chevrolet. Vermont's Chris Pelkey will take the Vermeer Northeast Chevrolet from ninth outside. It'll be Milton Scott Paye in cat number 37. The RPM Racing Engines Dodge Charger. Opening day winner, Brian Kruzak from New Market, New Hampshire in the Vinoceros, count number 19. 
And the 2019 ACT champion, Rich DeBow in count number 30 will roll from 12. Jimmy Hebert at count number 58. And to his outside will be Peyton Lane if you're at a Waterbury, Vermont, the Harrison Ready Mix car. Ryan Kuhn in car number 72, who we just saw very impressive in the Granite State Pro Stock Series race. The 2019 ACT Rookie of the Year, the Everett's Auto Pirates car, roll off 50. Outside of Ryan Lineup in car number 10 from Hope Valley, Rhode Island. Jake Johnson, the Daffodils gift shop Chevrolet, and outside of him, the SH Concrete car for Jason Larravy Jr. Michael Ray out of Northford, Connecticut, the DMW Graphics, car number 42, and a Woody Pencat, the Summit Ice Forward, car number 07, although the outside are number 10. Frank Dimicic out of, no, out of New York, the Teddy Bear Graphics car, and alongside of him from Quebec, the Derrick King Ford for Matthew Kingsbury. Joshua Hedges from New Bedford, Massachusetts, the regular at the Star Speedway, the Chuck Moran Auto Parts Toyota, and he'll be flanked by Glenn Boss. Row number 13 on the inside, the Sweethearts and Heroes flooring 360 Dodge for Dylan Paye, and alongside of him from Westerly, Benavides, the Benavides Tur and Toronto, Chevrolet and Power from Mike Benavides. Paul Duke about a Plymouth Mass and the Duke of Tree Service car, and Alexander Playball Turner at a Notre Dame to Pins, Quebec. In car number 21, it will go next on the grid. Car number 33, Remy Perot. And then on outside of Remy will be car number 21 for Riley Landfair. The 22, South Carolina from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. The Halls used Auto Park Chevrolet edition. That's Lance Jennison. Brandon Lindahl in car number 99. Eric Luchaki, who's already been in victory lane here today. Cat number 30, that is Alan King. And that is your starting lineup for the American and Canadian Tours concluding event. 75 laps to see who's going to join the list of winners along with Brian Hoare, Bobby Therrien, Eddie Mack, William Wall, and Jimmy Hebert looks to be the first ever repeat winner here as Jason Lemoy from Plattsburgh, New York, chose the field, the Clinch Street flag. The lights go out of the Thompson Speedway pace car. And next time by, we will go green for the first of 75 laps. Trent Goodrow, who was involved in an accident in qualifying, unable to make repairs to car number 31. He will go scratch on the field. 35 of the best late models throughout the Northeast and Quebec came here to Thompson Speedway to settle it all in 2019. And they will start the rebuilding process tomorrow morning, getting ready for the 2020 American Canadian Tour schedule. But we gotta finish it all out here tonight. Pace car onto pit road. Off of turn number four, down to the strike. Great flag is in the air. Field stacking up mid pack. And Ryan Morgan goes around, car number five, Tom Carey into the wall. Ryan Lynham, Peyton Lanfear, Mike Benavides, Glenn Boss, Riley Lanfear locked the 21 down. And that was kind of an exciting turn number one on lap number one. Problems for Stephen Donahue, car number two is stopped in turn four. He was the guy that started in the third position. And it looked like the front row had a couple of problems going into turn number one. Joining the field, that was the one that was obstructed by the Svoco side. Field crossing over to the columns of two here behind the Thompson Speedway pace car. Zero laps are complete, 75 laps to go. It'll be John Donahue. And Jonathan Bouvret on row number one on the restart. Mark Jennison and Mike Mitchell are going to make up row number two. Chris Pelkey and from 10th oh, on the grid, Scott Paye now up to sixth. The RPM Racing Engines Dodge Charger, last year's champion. Up to the sixth position, Brian Kruzak, and up to eighth is the point leader, Rich DeVell. Here they come out of the fourth corner, increasing the speed. Green flag is in the air, and they're on their way to turn number one. Let's see if they can get through. And they do. 
two. Donovan Bouvran leads the way. John Donahue gets a shot from behind by the 22 of Mark Jennison, who pedals to the bottom of the racetrack. And he'll go to the runner-up position as they head to turn number three with back points. Donahue on the outside of the 26. Donahue, the veteran, around the outside, hangs on to second as everybody chases the 41 of Bouvran. Bouvran, account number 41, leads into turn number one. Can you all oh, look out? Peyton Lanfear up into the outside retaining wall at turn number two. And the 22 of Lanfear slides it up into the wall at turn number two. See if we can get that car refired. And unfortunately, she will not be able to get it refired. And the yellow flag will come out. Tom Carey, the third, is back on pit road again at kind of a five. Apparently, the repairs were not to his liking. Mark Jennison's 22 is still in third place. Mike Mitchell is still fourth. Chris Pelkey fifth. Scott Paye, two-time and defending ACT champion, into the sixth position. Lights are down on the Thompson Speedway pace car. We'll go back to racing here very shortly. Less than 30 seconds away from the green flag. Bouvret and Donahue. Jennison and Michael Mitchell. All right, into the pits goes the Thompson Speedway pace car, and they pick the pace up off the fourth corner. Jason Lemoy looks them over and sends them on their way. Green flag is out, and a great start by Jonathan Bouvret. For the second time, the Hurricane car has had the lead by the whole shot, going into turn number one, and Bouvret drives away down the back stretch by three car lengths. Mark Jennison, the number 22, around the inside group, trying to hang on to the number two position as Donahue tries to fight back on the outside. Here they come out of four, down to complete lap number two. It'll be Bouvret, Jennison, and then John Donahue. Johnny Donahue with the 26 is third. Michael Mitchell is fourth. Fifth now, Scott Paye. Rich DeBow in the 30, gunning for the sixth position. DeBow now up to sixth. Pelkey back to seventh. And here comes Johnson on the outside of car 15. Jake Johnson on the outside of car number 15, beginning to make it work as he'll go to the high side on Chris Pelkey. Pelkey pinned on the bottom of the racetrack, going backwards. On the inside lane is Riley Lanfear slides into the inside wall. Remy Perot also around. All right, we'll try this one again as they pick up the pace out of the fourth corner down to the strike. Green flag is out. That time Donahue was with him. But move right into the side of the Donahue car, and they're piling up in turn number one. Jimmy Hebert into the wall. And somebody else piles in behind. I believe that to have been the 22 of Peyton Lanfear. Well, I'm right here by the 72 of Ryan Kuhn right now. They've got the pry bar out. They're going to try to pry some of the damage make it a little bit better. They've already duct taped the front end of Aaron as best they can on the 72, and the 58 of Jimmy Abert has made his way back, and as you said, heavy damage to the left rear of the 58 machine. Well, thank you very much, Dave. Yeah, that's, that about covers that one. Scores are going to work on the restart lineup. We've got three laps complete. And you kind of got to think that may have started at the front straightaway at the green flag when the 41 of Jonathan Bouvret got into the side of the John Donahue car and kind of bottled the field up behind him. Chain reaction. Three player, and he will drive off. So number one and two point men. Rich both crew helping to get the 58 car repaired and back out onto the racetrack in the battle for the second position in the standings between the 58 of Hebert and the 37 of Paye. Lights are down on the Thompson pace car and we'll go back to racing as the pace car will make its way into the infield. Move red on the inside, Donahue on the outside. We'll try this one again. Here they come at a turn number four. Down to the stripe and green flag is back out. And again, the 41 of Jonathan Bouvret running Don Donahue way up the racetrack into turn number one. Bouvret gets away with the lead down the back straightaway. Mark Jennison at count number 22 around the bottom of the racetrack, trying to go to second, take that spot away from Donahue, move him back to third. Paye pinned the 37 car to the bottom of the racetrack. He's trying to go to third now as he's on the bottom of John Donahue. 
Paye in the 37 around the bottom of the racetrack. Side by side with the 26 down the back straightaway. Donahue by a fender holds on to the number three position as they get back into turn number four. Bouvret, 41 the leader. Jennison now challenging to the inside off of turn number four. But Bouvret will hang on to the race lead as they complete lap number five. Jennison to the 22, continuing to try to find his way around the inside lane of this racetrack, but Jonathan Boo, French 41, holds him off. Jennison, the 22, right there. Donahue in the 26 has found his life on the outside lane, and he's holding Scott Paye off in the battle for third. Rich DeBell, point leader, is now up into the fifth position, and Jimmy Hebert's car is not too badly damaged off the base, and he's gotten around a couple of automobiles since the drop of the green flag. Two of them didn't seem to have any damage in that one at all. Six laps have been completed. It'll be seven this time. Out of turn four for Jonathan Bouvret. Bouvret, 41. 22, Genesis. Side-by-side -side battle for third between Donahue and Paye. Scott Paye, 37. John Donahue, 26. Right behind him, point leader, Rich DeVoe. Michael Mitchell, 44. Jake Johnson beginning to rumble in Canterbury, 15. And then Brian Kruzek in the 19. Chris Pelkey. And Woody Pickcat of the 07. Lance Jennison gets the 22 car out of shape on the front straight away, but he gathers that thing back under control. As Jonathan Bouvret continues to show the way here in the early going of this one. Early stages of the ACT 75. Here is part of the Thompson World Series of asphalt racing, and it's Jonathan Bouvret in control. But he is not getting away from the 22 of Mark Jennison. The battle side by side for third continues, although Donahue has eked himself ahead in car 26 on the outside. Caution flag is out. Derek Luchaki around off of turn number two. Luchaki in car zero three goes around. And the 99 car. Slides up into the wall on the back straightaway just for good measure. Report from Pitt Road from Keith Clark. They've got the 58 car band-aided back together as the best they could. And he was the winner here earlier this season, but as Keith kind of alluded to, since then the luck has not been on their side. A lot of damage at the Labor Day Classic, which kind of crippled Jimmy Hebert's labor, uh, championship chances. Uh, almost one of the favorites to win the Labor Day Classic going in, and then an accident in the mid midway going in that race. Completely altered the stages of what was going to happen there. Here they come at a four down to the straight. Green flag is out. Mark Jennison in counter 22. Puts the pedal. Oh, look out. Rich DeBull going around. Jake Johnson into the wall. Caution flag is out. Big pile up down there in turn number one. Rich DeBow, the point leader, goes around. And it looks like that car is still rolling. Yeah, he's able to drive the 30 car away. Jake Johnson, Steven Donahue, not as lucky. Joshua Hedges has a lot of damage. Chris Pelkey has shortened the nose on the 64 car substantially. And we are going to go to single file restart. All right, lights are down on the pace car. Looks like Paul Newcomb's done for the day as well in count number seven. Pace car makes its way into the infield, single file restarts. Here they come out of turn four, green flag back in the air. Jonathan Brad will lead down the back straightaway in count number 41. Everybody makes it through turn one and two this time. Mark Jennison, account number 22, trying to size up Jonathan Bouvret for the race lead. John Donnie trying to hold on to third place. Scott Payne. 
Matthew Kingsbury slides up the racetrack at Caterpillar 9. He'll lose a spot or two. Kellen Payet comes through, and now here comes the 31, Ryan Morgan. Glenn Boss, who was involved in the first incident, trying to rebound his way back up. He's going for a position just outside of the top 10. At the front, Bouvret opening up the advantage he has over the 22 of Jennison. Donahue, 26. Faye, 37. Donahue on the outside. Scott Faye on the inside. Faye had the nose ahead that time for the start finish line. Into turn number three, they stay side by side. Off the second corner down the back straightaway. Donahue pulls back up. They go even down the front, down the back straight. And into turn number three, Donahue pours it on, and he'll hang on to the number three position. Blue Brett in count number 41 shows the way. Mark Jennison, and then the side-by-side -side battle for third continues. Paye on the bottom. And the 26 of Donahue. Jonathan Blue Brett, count number 41, commanding the field. Donahue has held on to the third spot. He's held off stop Paye again for the second time. Woody Pitcat, the summit ice, Conover 07, beginning to make some noise, and he'll come to the inside of Brian Cruzek down the back stretch. That is the battle for fifth. Pitcat on the bottom of the 07, Cruzek on the outside of the 19. And again, the 19 and Cruzek used that outside lane to hold him on. Pitcat gets him, and back comes Cruzek with the crossover move down the back straightaway. Cruzek in the 19 going back for the fifth position, but Woody Pitcat will hook that car to the outside lane, and he'll hang on to fifth down the run straightaway. Brian Cruzak in car number 19 continuing to work over the back bumper of the Woody Pitcat cars. Pitcat just got by him. Pick out of the 07, hanging on to the fifth spot as Paye goes back on the attack for third. Scott Paye, 07, continues to pinch that car down to the bottom of the racetrack, trying to get around the 26 of John Donahue. But Donahue will keep it rolling on the high side of the racetrack, and he'll hang on to third again. Jonathan Bouvret in car number 41 shows the way. He is in command of this one. Mark Jennison, and then Donahue, who was holding off Scott Payne in the 37. Woody Pitcat trying to get on his horse and track down that battle for third position as he rides in fifth. Six to Brian Krujak, seventh to Dylan Paye. And Dylan Paye in count number seven has come from 25th on the grid at 19 laps. He's now up just outside of the top five, running in the seventh spot in car number seven. Mike Mitchell, eight, ninth to Matthew Kingsbury, and Ryan Morgan rounds out the top ten with Ryan Hood to his inside on the attack for the tenth spot. Eleventh is Derek Luchaki, and then you have Glenn Boss in count number three, Alexander Tardif, the 58 is Jimmy Hebert, and then Rich DeBow in count number 30. Black traffic. Dead ahead. For the battle for third. Donahue 26 leads him into it as they lap around the outside of King in the 30. And Remy Perot in the 33. Paye continues to try to find his way underneath the Donahue. Donahue leaves the inside lane wide open as Lance Jennison gets sideways in car 22 off of turn number two, but gathers the car back under control. With race leader to his outside, Jonathan Bouvret trying to lap around the 22. Lance Jennison, 22, has now gone a lap down to the 41 of Jonathan Bouvret. Mark Jennison in the 22, and then John Donahue in the 26 is third still, fourth to Bayer. Woody Pitcat fifth. 
six to Kurzak. Seventh is the seven of Dylan Faye, who comes in number five in the standings. Field stacks up behind the 22 of Lance Jennison that time off the second corner. Everyone able to navigate their way to safety. But now here comes Woody Pitcat to the inside on Scott Faye for Ford. Woody Pitcat around the bottom of the racetrack trying to take the fourth spot away from Scott Faye's 37. As Faye really had to pedal out of the throttle when they locked around the 22 of Lance Jennison. set sail at the front of the pack. 27 laps on the board. It has been all Jonathan Bouvret so far. Inching along the bottom of the racetrack. So in the battle, just outside of the top five is Woody Pitcat. Actually, it's just inside of the top five. It's for the fourth position. Pitcat around the bottom will go to fourth. Scott Paye now will go back to fifth on the outside. as the 41 of Bouvret continues to lay a beating on the field. Bouvret has got him covered right now as he has got a half a straightaway lead over the 22 of Mark Jennison. Donahue with the 26. And Woody Pickett with a bobble that time in turn number four. That allows Kruzek to come up the inside lane as Kruzek's trying to get it back into the top five. Pitcat was working on the inside of Scott Pay, and the car twitched off the third and fourth corner. It almost collected the 37 of Pay and the 19 of Kruzek, but everyone able to keep it headed in the right direction. And now again to the bottom of the racetrack goes Scott Pay, trying to battle his way around the 26 of John Donahue. Jonathan Bouvret continuing to lay the smack down on the field here at the Thompson Speedway. Continuing to open up the distance between himself and second place Mark Jennison at number 22. Scott Paye, 37, puts the fender ahead of Donahue in the center of the corner, but as they go down the straightaway, back fights Donahue on the outside lane and he'll hang on to third again. Woody Pitcat, 0-7, hangs on to fifth as Dylan Faye, Scott's cousin, now challenges Brian Kruzek for the sixth position. Bouvret, 41. Problems continuing for the number 22. Oh, look out, we got a car around in turn number two. I believe that is the 99 of Brandon Lindahl, who started 32nd on the grid. Caution flag is out here on lap 32. We're just Jonathan Bouvret in count number 41 is the leader. Mark Jennison in the 22. Donahue, Paye, Pitcat, Kruzak. Dylan Faye. Pace car makes the left hand turn into the infield and we're set to go. Here they come out of four. Green flag is out. Scott Paye cuts it around the bottom of the racetrack and he's going to go to third as Donahue gets shuffled back to fourth. Woody Pitcat fifth. Brian Kruzek now trying to work his magic on the outside lane and get around the 07 to Pitcat. It's Pitcat now just for fourth on the inside. Woody Pitcat, the summit of ice, 07 goes to fourth as Donahue gets shuffled up the racetrack here. Three wide up a two. Donahue lifts out of it. Lifts out of the gas to fight again another day as Ryan Kuhn came around. Dylan Paye went through as well on the bottom as they stacked up three wide. Derek Luchaki and Kyer Oakery also getting into the mix there. 
Jonathan Bufret is the leader. Mark Jennison and Al Scott Paye has dispatched John Donahue. Let's see how fast the 37 car is. This time by, it'll be 35 laps complete. 35 for Jonathan Bufret. And the 37 of Paye and the 07 of Woody Pinkat have broken free. And we'll see if they can do anything with the 41 of Bufret and Jennison who have been firmly in control of the field before that caution flag. Jonathan Bouvret, 41. Has a handful of race car, but he is making it work in the front of the pack. Mark Jennison and Scott Paye, Woody Pinkett, Brian Kruzek, and that is your top five. Sixth to Ryan Coon, seventh is Dylan Paye, eighth to John Donahue, ninth to Derek Luchaki, and Michael Mitchell's gonna round out the top 10 in car 44, as we are one lap away from the halfway point. This time by, cross flags are in the air. We are halfway home in this one. Halfway for Jonathan Bouvret and Scott Paye and company have reeled in Mark Jennison for second. Jennison in the 22, Paye 37. The 07 of Woody Pinkat and Brian Kruzek are working the back door of the 22 car. Jennison in the 22, holds off Scott Paye, as Paye was right on the rear bumper. Trying to set up the 22 with 35 laps to go as they come off the fourth corner this time. Thirty-five laps to go for car 41, Jonathan Red and Scott Paye is trying to find any way around the 22 of Mark Jennison he can gather. But Jennison is holding on to that number two position. Woody Pinkat 07 and Brian Kruzek in the 19. All run right behind Mark Jennison as Jonathan Bouffret at car 41 continues to show the way. John Donahue would run in third place and got shuffled back on the restart. Been able to hold off the 0-3 of Derek Luchaki. They're having a pretty good battle right there. And another car beginning to move back up through the field is that zero, is that 30 of Rich DeVoe, the point leader. Has the championship in the bag, had the layup after winning the heat race. He's moved around Alexander Tart, it's 21, and he's still continuing to try to drive towards the front. And now Scott Payne going for second on the bottom. The Milton Vermont driver, Scott Paye, on the bottom, trying to get around the 22 of Jennison. Jennison throws the body slam. Paye has to back out of the gas, and now here comes Pinkat to the inside. Jonathan Bouvret is the leader. Mark Jennison is using every move he can in order to hang on to the number two position as Scott Payne tries to work his back bumper. Woody Pitcat has fourth. Fifth is Kruzek. And they are stacked up right behind that 22 of Mark Jennison. Jonathan Bouvret is opening back up now. Half a straightaway lead at the front of the pack at car 41. Jennison holding on to second. Paye in the 37, trying any way around him. He's tried high, 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 and low, 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 but he wants the middle of the racetrack, and that's where the 22 car is parked. Big Cat, Kruzak, and Ryan Kuhn, the 2019 ACT Rookie of the Year. Have all lined up right behind the 22 of Mark Jennison.
on it and move red and count number 41 is out on cruise control at the front of the pack at this one. The Derrick King, car 41 and Jonathan Mubrat showing the way. With 26 laps to go. Seven's going to go down to the bottom again on the 22 American Genesis, but things better if we going into turn one that time. Brian Krusek bustling to the inside lane on Woody Pitcat for four. Krusek, the green and white number 19 with the pink numbers in honor of breast cancer awareness. Hunting the bottom of the racetrack, trying to get fourth away from Woody Pitcat. Continuing to click away for Jonathan Bovrat, who right now is unmolested at the front of the pack. And the guy directly behind him in the running order, Mark Jennison, has been anything but unmolested. As Scott Payne has worked the inside, the outside, and the rear bumper, trying to find any way around if he can. But Jennison just able, strong enough to hold on to that number two position. Get into lap traffic, Remy Perot's 33. And then the number 42 of Frank Dumichich Jr. Final car on the lead lap is now the number 70 of Jason Larrabee Jr. Scott Paye still hasn't been able to figure out the combination to get around the 22 of Mark Jennison in the battle for second. And Jonathan Move Red in the 41 is just keep pounding that pedal harder and harder into the floorboard and driving away with it. 18 laps to go now for Jonathan Move Red in car 41. Update on the championship, Rich DeBow, car number 30, the 2019 ACT champion. And rookie of the year is going to go to the 72 of Ryan Coon. Second now, working its way through the lap traffic of Remy Moreau. And Jennison is way sideways that time off the fourth corner. Jennison almost threw it away that time, coming off a of turn number four. And Scott Paye smells the blood of the water like a shark dives down to the bottom and turns one and two. Three wide around the lap car, down the back straightaway with now 15 laps to go when they come out of turn number four. And Jennison slammed the door on Scott Paye that time. Jennison is losing the handle on car number 22, and Scott Paye is pushing the issue. At the front, though, it is all Jonathan Boo Brat in his own area code with 14 laps to go. And now here comes Woody Pitcat to work on the inside as Paye couldn't do anything with the 22. Of Jennison now, Pitcat of the 07 is going to try his luck to the bottom. But down the back straightaway, Pay is able to hold off Pitcat. Bouvret still half straightaway lead in the front. At 
at the front of the pack. Jonathan Bouffrat all alone. Mark Gennison. Bayek. Big Cat. And Kruzek still the top five as they have been. But Ryan Coon now flexing some muscle, trying to find a way around the 19 of Ryan Kruzek. Eleven laps to go. And here comes Woody Pitcat to work in the 07, going for second on the bottom. Pitcat gets himself to third. Now he needs one more to go to second down the back straightaway. Pay Alips out of the gas. But I believe right now anybody running in the number two position would need a caution to catch the 41 of Jonathan Boo Brett. Scott Payne gets tagged off to number two and he slides through the infield and into the inside retaining wall. And the yellow flag is out. Scott Payne. But unfortunately that 37, not as good. Right side of that car obliterated, torn off. As a matter of fact, almost just hanging on the on the frame of that car as they begin to tow away. As you said, Aaron, he slid down the, the back stretch into the grass and just hit this back retaining wall pretty hard. And uh, if, if that car comes around, you're going to see the right side of that car totally destroyed. Well, thank you very much, Dave. Tough break for Scott Pay. He's been a championship contender for the last four years, you know, consecutively. Lost in 2016 to Nick Sweet, scored the championship victory in 2017 and 2018. And then it was looking like he's going to come home in third today, but then with the problems early for Jimmy Hebert, it looked like he had a shot at the number two position. And then, you know, Rich DeBeau had some problems, and it was, you know, looking like it could have gone kind of anyway. You, and then, you know, here we are late in the running. And, Ryan Kruzak gets into the back of the Scott Paye car and Paye go down, goes down into the infield and they've got the 37 car all torn up. They'll a lot of damage on the right side of that 37 as you can look down at the back straightaway now and see that car being towed back into the infield. So the 30 of Alan King has gone to Bear Road out of what would have been a restart in the third position, but he was four laps down at the time. Jason Larrabee Jr. in count number 70. He's a one lap down running second on the racetrack. Looked like he was going to go to the tail of the field, but then decided to pull back up into his position. Ten laps to go, and from Chief Starter Jason Lemoy. Next time by, we'll go green. Alan King returns from pit road. Bouvret with a lap car of Jason Larrabee as the buffer. Mark Jennison, 22, and then Woody Pitcat is third. Ryan Coon is up to fourth, and fifth is now Dylan Paye in count number seven. Pace car into the infield with 10 laps to go. Here they come, out of turn four, down to the stripe, green flag is out. Opens it up down the back straight away and gets away from Mark Jennison. Woody Pitcat. Unable to stay with him that time. And Jennison will hang on to second with nine laps to go. Leaders 
trying to work around the 70 of Jason Laramie Jr. And now fifth place Dylan Bay will pull up the challenge as Bouvret continues to show the way in the 41, but he has had the strongest car all evening long, and he keeps him in the rearview mirror. What he pick at the kind of a 07 with eight laps to go is trying. He's digging by his bootstraps, but Mark Jensen is hanging on to that number two spot as well. Woody Pinkett, Ryan Coon, and Dylan Bay are your top five. Lap 79 going on the board. Or lap 69, excuse me, going on the board. Here they come off of turn number four with five laps to go for Jonathan Bouffret. Five to go for the Quebec driver, Jonathan Bouvret. Bouvret looking for his first career ACT win. Four laps to go. And Woody Pinkett now will try to challenge to the inside for second. And that is exactly what Blue Brett wants to see, is he can run his own racing lane and try to drive away. Laps are getting short in this one. Three to go as they come off of the corner. Three laps to go for Jonathan Blue Brett. And Jenison is hanging on to second. to go this time. Two to go for Jonathan Bouvret. And second and third place bounce off each other and that allows Bouvret to get his lead a little bit bigger. He's coming in a turn four to the white flag one more time around for Jonathan Bouvret in time number 41. Final time down the back straightaway for the 41 of Bouvret as he leads. Battle for second is going to come down to the wire. Jonathan Bouvret will win it. Checkered flag is out. And it looks like Alexander Cardiff hit the wall on the back straightaway on the inside, very similar to the way Scott Paye did. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go down to Critical Signs of Victory Lane and we're gonna meet Jonathan Bouvret, the race winner, and we're gonna meet our champion in 2019 on the run straightaway at the conclusion of that victory lane. So the race had its bumps and bruises, but in the end, it was a man from Canada, Jonathan Bouvret, who was able to uh, survive this one as uh, he was the uh, last man standing on the island and he was able to get the win. It started with 35 cars, it ended with 19, but uh, the man in front, and there was not much question about it, it was Jonathan Bouvret who got the win, and for the second time uh, this season in the ACT, it was Woody Pitcat who finished in second. You see Bouvret with the checkered flag uh, carrying it on his way to Critical Signs Victory Lane, and he is taking a victory lap around the five-eighths of a mile. Coming up next will be the Valente Modified Racing Series, their final race in 2000 and 19, and there is Bouvret on his way to a, a well-deserved victory lap. 
and Critical Signs Victory Lane will be open for business momentarily as we will be getting ready for the trophy presentation and we will also be meeting the champion for 2019 as this is a final American Canadian event of the year. We will have the Valente Modified Racing Series next. Remember tomorrow, 11.15, it will be Q&A. Joe Koss will be interviewing three of the big names on the tour. From Budweiser Place, New York, Craig Lutz. From Milford, Connecticut, Doug Kobe. And from the island, Justin Bonsignor. Bonsignor and Kobe will be fighting it out for the championship tomorrow. Kobe going for title number six. Jonathan Vervet is out of the car, and we go to the voice of the American Canadian Tour, Aaron Maynard. Well, Jonathan Vervet, you come on over here, Jonathan. Congratulations, you laid a whooping on the field here today. Yeah, that car is very, very fast today. The, in the first practice, that car is very good. But uh, thank you, uh, all my crew, all my fans, uh, all guys in the, the grandstand here today. All right, you want to address your Canadian friends, your Canadian fans in français? Yes. Merci à tout le monde euh, qui sont venus du Québec nous encourager. On court tout le temps à loin, nos supporters, euh, Zero King, Dynamite euh, Piché, DLGL, nommez-les toutes. Euh, C'est pas facile pour tout le monde. On est tout le temps sur des pistes étrangères. Mais aujourd'hui, euh, on a montré qu'on est à mon pareil. You've won many times on the Serie ACT up in Quebec, but this is your first one on American soil. Yeah, this is the first. Congratulations. You got the Sunoco World Series Championship Trophy. They're going to take all the big time pictures here in a victory lane and celebrating the win for Jonathan Bouvret, former champion of Serie ACT up in the Quebec and Ontario provinces. He's also a former champion of the St. Eustache Speedway. And now he is a winner on the American and Canadian Tour on the U.S. soil on the biggest track that the American and Canadian Tour goes to in the point counting season. So Jonathan gets his Sunoco World Series trophy, and we would like to thank John Holland, of course, our host for this weekend. Uh, Gary Bryington has been in victory lane representing uh, Sunoco. So uh, they have passed out the big trophy to Jonathan Bouvret, as Aaron mentioned, his first win ever on American soil. And uh, we expect our champion, uh, to come out. So let's go uh, back to Aaron and see what's happening. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let him hear it. Your 2019 American Canadian Tour champion from Lebanon, New Hampshire, Rich DeBeau. Rich, come on over here. I got. I got a spot over here for you. You've gotten pretty pretty accustomed to this. So you started out, I can remember all the way back to the first year you ran with us, you ran a Canaan Fair Speedway. And I'm not even sure that your first time out in the American Indian Tour that you qualified. And now you've graduated up through, you started getting some podium finishes, you went to Richmond, you finished third to Joey Pole and Wayne Hellowell, two of the last champions here. You now join a list with Dave Dion, Beaver Dragon, Robbie Crouch, Junior Hanley, Nick Sweet, Gene Paul Sear, Joey Pohl, Wayne Hellowell, and Brian Hoare, and Scott Pay, the last two. You are now, from the kid that couldn't qualify for an ACT race, progressed your program through and are now the champion of the American Canadian Tour in 2019. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, as I tell everyone, uh, I'm just... I'm, I'm the driver, but I'm just the driver. You know, this is a total team effort. There's no way I can go out and win a championship on my own. It takes a complete team. Uh, I'd like to thank my car owner, Chick Henry. Um, distance racing. My crew guys are just amazing. Uh, I'm sure they'd make any, any driver look better than they are. And uh, 
Yeah, you said it. I mean, it's uh, it's been progression. You know, uh, tenth place in point standings our first year, and we progressed seventh place, fifth place, fourth, and and now we're we're standing here. It doesn't really feel real, to be honest with you, even though it, it was looking good coming all the way into this race and everything. But but uh, yeah, I just uh, I I can't believe how this season's gone. This wasn't a season without without tribulations either, because you were leading the points, you picked up your first ever career win, and then you followed it up with not such a good race, and it looked like, well, you know, the, the, the regular big dogs are going to just run back away with it, and then you're like, ah, oh, we're going to go to Thunder Road, their home track, and you just let them have it. Yeah, that's, that's as unbelievable as, uh, as this championship is, to be honest. Uh, Thunder Road's always been our weakest track, and, and Chaudier was awesome. It was our first ACT win. That was really, really cool, but... But uh, Thunder Road meant a lot to us because, you know, you always look at your weak track, and, and we went into the season saying that's our weak track. Let's try to get top tens, top fives, and then to come out and win it was uh, unbelievable for us. Today didn't go the way it, it could have gone because you, you have run strong here, but it didn't go as bad as it could have when you got crossed up in turn one. Yeah, I, I thought I had it saved down there. Uh, one of the guys on the outside kind of kind of nicked the nose a little bit and, and got us real loose, but, uh, and then, I, you know, Stuff happens, we'll take it. Uh, yeah, today, like you said, didn't go quite how we wanted, but uh, the big picture went perfectly. All right, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Let them hear it. Your 2019 American Canadian Tour Champion, Rich Dubow, driver of car number 30. And we'll go back upstairs to Matt. Well, Aaron, when you look at the big picture, you'll see Rick Dubow's face on it, as uh, he was a dominant factor in 2019. The American Canadian Tour has a Rookie of the Year, and I'm standing with him right here, the number 72 of Brian Coon. Congratulations, Brian. Thank you. I appreciate it. How old are you? 18. 18. 18. You make me feel so old. That's, <laughs> congratulations. That's great. Tell the folks a little bit about yourself. Where do you come from and how long have you been racing? Uh, I'm from Massachusetts, and uh, I've been racing since 2010, around that, and uh, this is my first full-time season in the tour. We won a late model championship, the Seekonk Speedway, last year. Uh, we came from Legend Cars. We won a lot of races there, and from there, uh, here we are. I won't hold it against you to come from Mass. What town? East Bridgewater. East Bridgewater. And you, your home track before was Seekonk? Yes, yeah, Seekonk was my home track, and uh, we'll actually be back there in two weeks. That is awesome. Man, you, you've done a lot for an 18-year-old. Yeah, uh, I feel like I've accomplished a lot of things, and uh, I feel like there's a lot more to come. I would think so. If you keep on this rate, you must have a real good team. You want to tell the folks uh, who they are? Oh, yeah. Uh, my dad's my crew chief, Jimmy. Uh, I got my grandfather, the cameraman. Got Peter Bernier over here. Got uh, PT. We call him PT, but his name's Bob. Got Tim, Brenda, Tom, and uh, where's everyone? Chucky. Got a, got a lot of people here today and uh, a lot of supporters and we actually had a couple extra hands today. Uh, Michael Cooper came out today and uh, helped out and uh, yeah, I'd also like to thank the sponsors, Everett's Auto Parts, Bernier's Liquors and uh, Modern Auto Body. Now I bet you come from a racing family. Yes, I do, yeah, uh, third generation racer. That is great. What did your dad race in? Uh, he, was a, he was a big modified driver. But you will, you will like to hang those fenders on there, huh? I tried to modify it a couple of years ago, and uh, uh, we, we had to stop running them, and we ended up running the fendered cars after that. You What are your plans on the future? You, you plan on running the tour again next year? Uh, we don't have any confirmed plans yet next year, and uh, we, we'll, we'll hopefully uh, find out shortly. Great. Well, congratulations. Rookie of the Year. Yeah, and I'll tell you, the American Canadian Tour, as you already know, is a great series yeah. to run, and you would be more than welcome. I'm sure they'd be happy to have you come back, but congratulations. Thank you. Ordinarily, coming in fourth, you'd feel, I mean, yeah, fourth, you'd feel kind of like, oh, man. But this guy here, Mark Jennison, he ran a heck of a race. You were right up there in second place most of the race, and uh, you gave it your all. Yeah. Yeah, we missed the adjustment a little bit. We, we got a little too loose in the center there for a while. I could drive sometimes up a little bit on that 41, but man, he was just on it tonight. He was, he could run that way up on the top of the track, grooving. I just couldn't keep with him. 
You ran a real good race earlier with the uh, Thompson late models. Uh, where did you end up finishing for the year? Well, we ended up third in that race, third in points, and then we, we finished third here. So it's 3-3-3 three, three, three today. <laughs> Beautiful. That was you were on a you were on a rail tonight. Congratulations on a good run, Mark. Hey, thank you. It's, it's been a long time coming. I've been dying to get this act race and get a good finish. And we've been closer before, and just things happen, and you know you just don't get something right, and you make some mistakes. But I love racing with these guys, and they're great guys, and uh, can't wait to come back. Mark race for. Two or three years in a row, uh, full time on the American Canadian Tour, and now he's racing full time here at Thompson Speedway. But it's always Seacon great to too. and Seacon, Seacon yeah, finished fifth in points there, and won a race over there too at Seacon. So he's been a busy guy, but it's great to have him back on the American Canadian Tour with this race here. Congratulations, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have one winner of the race, Jonathan Bovet. Jonathan, you come all the way down from Quebec. This win must be big for you. Yeah, it's a big win. First, it's my first win in ACT Tour and uh, win the World Series of, uh, of Stock Car. It's a big, big event for me and my team, but uh, I win. <laughs> How many years you've been doing this? Here? It's the first time. The um, first year. The second time race, but the first time I am uh, come here this year. How many years you race in Canada? Ten years. Yep. 10 years. Pretty tough race. You were flying. Your car was hooked up strong. Yeah, the car is very, very, very fast today. But the, the, my team worked hard uh, all year long. But uh, now this is the, the victory for the team and me. It's always great to go out on top. You can enjoy this all winter long. Yeah, yeah, it's a good race. Have a safe ride home. How many hours is it to get back home? Six years, six, six uh, hours to go on. Have a safe ride and congratulations. Thank you. Turn, turn the trophy around. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Ready? Number one, baby. Number one.